I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction, here with your feeder flash for Wednesday, March the 24th, brought to you in part by Sweet Pro, the right ingredients in the right block. Sweet Pro premium supplements provide a better way to maximize your cow herd's performance through superior nutrition. For more information, visit SweetPro.com. Time marches on, and I got some news earlier this week uh, that's been kind of weighing on me all week long, and and uh, and uh, I've I got the okay to share it on here, but I want to give everybody the the real story and and the truth about what happened. But uh, the St. Joe Stockyards, where I spent a big bulk of my adult life and my career. Uh, covering the markets there, buying and selling cattle there, just uh, just kind of everybody hung around the St. Joe Stockyards if you're in, in the business in that part of the country. But St. Joe Stockyards have sold and, uh, and they will be uh, eventually tearing them down. But they're not done yet. They've still got a few months here to go. And, and I tell you what, if you guys have cattle to sell, you'll get top of the market there. And if you're an old customer, you need to come back one more time. If you got cattle to move over the next several months, uh, we'd sure like to see them there. Uh, Going to have some good sales coming up here over the next few months, uh, but before they everybody kind of disperses, and then uh, the new owners will take over, and, and they are going to uh, uh, level that that property there and use it for something else. But uh, Mark Service, the uh, the owner and manager there, been manager there for for many years. Uh, he just they've been squeezing them out. The city, uh, I tell you what, is uh, he was telling me what his uh, industrial sewage bill is. It's astronomical and getting higher all the time. Uh, what he has to do with the manure, uh, what he has to do, you know, if they have deads and and all the like, and the water problems, water issues there with a facility that's a uh, hundred and thirty four years old. Uh, it's just uh, it's just a taxing effort there, and uh, you know, but he was willing to fight it. He loves the stockyards as much as anybody, I'd say. But uh, you know, that land just got to where it's worth more than than what it was to try to scratch out a market there and, and finally it just got uh, to be more than than you could uh, fight off and 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 so they're gonna he's gonna sell or he's sold and and they've got a few more months to, to run there and you guys need to go visit you need to go to bring them some cattle there uh, still got all the, the the commission firms that they have had there for the last uh, many years and and I tell you what it's just hard to imagine uh, life without the St. Joe Stockyards. And many of my good friends that I worked alongside there with uh, spent their, you know, pretty much their entire working life there. And uh, I, I tell you what, we, we had so much fun around there. I tell you what, the, the stockyards is just any old stockyards. And I've worked in several. Uh, South St. Paul, I, I worked there for a time when I was with USDA. I uh, covered the last sale at the Lancaster, Pennsylvania Stockyards out in Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania, and, and uh, it, it just it's different than a sale barn. I tell you what, oh, an old stockyards is just different than a sale barn. But there's none left; they're all gone. St. Joe was the last uh, Terminal River Market stockyards that was still going. Uh, we, we lost uh, West Fargo there uh, here a year or two ago, but uh, you know all of them have just went by the wayside. You know, and, and 20 years ago, pretty much all of them were still kind of going. Uh, 30 years for sure, but uh, St. Joe was the last one, still a very very viable feeder cattle market. Uh, when I when I went there in uh, in 2000. Uh, you know, they were still selling hogs there, uh, private treaty there in the yards. I, you know, I, I was a market reporter. I went out and got the hog market every day. Uh, they still sold a few fat cattle, though they were selling through the auction. They weren't selling out on the bricks anymore. Uh, it was just, it was just a lot of fun. But all the old old timers were still there when I first got there, and to hear the old stories. Uh, it, it was just it was just such a treat to listen to the old stories and hang out with the guys and and uh, you know when when somebody said I'll meet you at the yards that's where everybody met you know was that wasn't the yards uh, you know it wasn't a sale barn you know well, let's go by the sale barn the yards was a bigger deal and uh, for any of you guys that, that grew up spent a lot of time around an old stockyard I tell you what there's just so many characters around them uh, so much going on you know St. Joe always touts. 
uh, that they were where the Pony Express began and where Jesse James ended. So well, the Pony Express was headquartered out of St. Joe. There's a lot of history there if you guys haven't been around there. And, and indeed, that's where uh, Jesse James was killed. Uh, and he had lived not too far from there, all, you know, pretty much all of his life. But uh, that's that's uh, history there in St. Joe. But man, there was a lot of history down around the old stockyards and the exchange building. And, and um, you know, guys used to come in there, uh, producers, some of them would ride the train in with their cattle. You know, they would go and do their business in the exchange building. They had an old tunnel that went underneath the uh, the rails because the, the, the railroad was always, you know, occupied there loading and unloading livestock. So you could go underneath in a tunnel over there and go over to the hoof and horn and get you a drink and get you a steak. And, you know, where it is, even back in the old days, they had uh, women that kind of take care of your needs upstairs, you know, and uh, just uh, such a, a wealth of stories around there. I, I always remember uh, the old stories about the guys in the hog markets, uh, Larry and Beak and, and Sonny and all the guys down there, I tell you what, they had so many times, and then the guys in the cattle yards, uh, you know, forever remember all of their stories, and, and so many uh, dear friends of mine, Barry Bowes and Dwayne Penny and, and Mark Service and, and a lot of the guys around there, the old timers, uh, you know, uh, you know, there's just a jillion of them. You can talk about them, you know, forever. And, and I know all of them and like all of them. But you go back in the, in the way back history there. In the 1930s and 40s, uh, St. Joe was averaging around three and a half million head of livestock a year. That is huge. And like I say, it went on for 134 years, but actually at a different location. They had actually, the original stockyards in St. Joe started 14 years before that. So it's just going to be uh, unbelievable not to have a stockyard in St. Joe. Now likely uh, there, somebody will be building another facility, you know, outside of town or something. But uh, St. Joe will always be a stockyard town to me, and, and uh, it's kind of hard to imagine life without it. And I'm going to have to make at least another trip or two back up there uh, before they, they stop selling cattle altogether. But uh, let's talk about what, what went on with the board on Tuesday. Your April live cattle futures up 35 cents at 119.12. June up $1.12 at 120.05. Going out from there, they were up 10 cents to up 97 cents. Uh, your, your deliveries can start now April the 5th or you can tender for delivery starting April the 5th which is not that far out there and we got a spot live cattle futures market at 119.12 a last established market is a 114 so uh, something's fixing to happen guys how about March feeder cattle up 37 cents at 135.45 April up 32 cents at 139.75 going out to your back months on feeder cattle up 32 cents to up 60 uh, your grain futures a uh, pinch higher there but settling uh, and then they're about where they've been here for the last two or three weeks so they're kind of settling in here they jostle back and forth but uh, make corn on, on Tuesday settled at 551 and a quarter Beans ended at 14.23 and a quarter. Uh, it's a pretty sizable quote there compared to what they've been over the last several years. Fat cattle trade has been non-existent so far, but they come in pretty early in the morning on Tuesday with steady bids of 114. Okay, guys, that means you are due for a higher market. Understand, Dio? Now, I don't care what the board does. Now, the board's been pretty friendly Monday and Tuesday. You guys hold your ground and 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 try to get some uh, at least two bucks on this market. It should be 116 at least. Uh, you guys you have to do it. You have to make the market, not take the market. You have to do that. Your packers need cattle. There's not uh, uh, an overload of market-ready supplies right now. Uh, your Cargill Schuyler plant's going to open back up a day earlier, earlier than what they thought. Going to be open up uh, on Wednesday. So, uh, you know, things are looking brighter. Everybody's in a good mood. Uh, you know, the, the sun shines out. Of course, they're going to have snow and, and rain on, on uh, Wednesday in, in, uh, in the Southern Plains. But still, it's time to make hay here, guys. You've got to gain some ground and you've got to do it yourself dig in and do something. 
uh, consolidated beef producers had a cash pool on Tuesday, but there was no trade due to the lack of competitive bids. Now, what does that mean? Well, they got some bids, but they didn't think that they were they were competitive. So they said, no, we're not going to sell them for that. So, uh, you know, each individual couldn't do that. Uh, uh, but Casey Bradshaw there running the show, he, he thought that we sure deserve more than that because he's got his eyes open and they know he knows the market. So they did have some bids and they posted them. 113.01, 113.51, and even 114.12, and that's on an adjusted live grid base price. So likely going to be two or three bucks higher than that when they come back, but didn't think that was a competitive bid because he knows we're due a higher market. So I tell you what, you know, talk about an outfit that's pushing uh, for, for uh, you know, your cattle feeders is consolidated beef producers. They'll also sell your show list if you want to work with them that way. How about box beef cutout values up big? Now there's no reason these packers can't come across with a couple bucks more. Look on Tuesday afternoon, choice cuts 304 higher at 233.99. Uh, selects 225.23 up 218. And what what was the last quoted market high on dressed 182? And and we got 225 and 234. Uh, okay, something's not right here, guys. You got to get with it. How about your feeder cattle market? Your real time index on DV auction late in the day on Tuesday at 136 and a quarter. That was up 76 cents. And if you look at what your March feeder cattle quote is uh, for Tuesday's close, 135.45, it's exactly halfway in between your real time index and your CME cash feeder cattle index, the latest quote. So I tell you what, very good indicator and likely kind of a lead mark right there. Let's talk about some of your big feeder cattle sales. I'm going to give you a lot of quotes, guys. I hope you want to listen to them. Ozarks Regional Stockyard, West Plains, Missouri. How about uh, feeder steers? And that's including stalker types. We're 3 to $4 higher. Now the softer new crop calves were kind of unevenly steady. Heifers steady to 3 bucks higher. And Dan Hill, my friend there uh, that had a good trainer, he's uh, he'd been reporting the market there for several years. He said that the quality was just average, really. And I noticed that because they didn't have really any big strings uh, that stuck out through Cattle Market Central when I pulled their information. But, uh, you know, guys are still digging in there and getting cattle. And I've told you guys before, they still got a lot of those continental cross kind of cattle there. They got really a little bit more age than they do size which will absolutely explode if you turn them out on grass. And, uh, and that's why the guys are heavy hitting in on there, but didn't have many uh, bigger uh, reputation strings to, to get excited about. How about some other sales around the circuit? Beaver County Stockyards, Beaver, Oklahoma had a great sale, 2,500 head there. And I just want to show you guys the load lots and bigger of eight to 900 pound steers that they had in Beaver, Oklahoma. Look at them there, guys and pulled all them out and, and I checked the market on them. They were straight up three bucks higher than last week. Look at your two stick out deals there. Two loads of light eights weighing from eight to 810, both of them bringing $136, pretty good quote. How about Fredonia Livestock Auction? About 1,500 head of feeders there, uh, but Brad Hahn, my friend there, he had a one hell of a sale. And, uh, you know, I was hearing quotes from him. I was hearing quotes from buyers that were sitting there, uh, you know, bidding on cattle there, but sharply higher, sharply higher market. Everything was a perfect storm in Fredonia. They had the kind of cattle they wanted there. They had the buyers in there to buy them and they went at it. And it's, uh, you know, I have to say it. I sound like I'm a LMA uh, contestant there, but true price discovery guys. It's where it all come together right there. And you had a world champion auctioneer, Blaine Lott, selling them. And so, uh, you know, they sold awful well in there. But, uh, you know, it was sharply higher than the light run that they had last week. And you got to take that into account. But it would be sharply higher than anything. Look at this uh, uh, automated uh, market report because they're not marked. They're not reported by Federal State Market News Service. Can't imagine why. But uh, look at these quotes on these best tested weights. 172 head of the five weight steers 
averaged 529 with an average price on all of them of 180.39 on the weighted average guys 204 out of the six weight steers averaged 648 at 162.92 on the weighted average of all of them 189 head of the eight weight feeder steers averaged eight and a quarter with an average weighted average price of 135.21 yeah sharply higher how about some heifers 344 head of the five weight heifer calves averaged 538 163.50 on the average of all the five weight heifers in the barn and they had a bunch of them that's unbelievable they won't sell steers that high in most places 160 head of the six weight heifers averaged 650 at 146 and a quarter unbelievable quotes how about Kimball livestock exchange another market that we're the only one reporting 3,700 head of feeders there at Kimball. They have big sales every week. How about uh, the, some quotes out of there? 443 head of the seven weight steers averaged 742 with a weighted average price on all of them of 148.99. 518 head of the eight weight feeder steers in Kimball, South Dakota, 843 pounds on the average weight, 138.28 average price on all of them unbelievable how about some nine weights 904 head of them average 927 133 39 that, that was, that's higher than what your eight weights would have averaged last week in most sales it's just the uh, markets better everywhere how about some stick out individual quotes around well the light calves Fredonia livestock auction 92 head 512 pound steer calves bring 189 bucks Philip the Giant, Philip, South Dakota, 79 head, 590 pound steers. The other end of the five weights, weighing almost 600 pounds, bring 182 bucks. How about Riverton Livestock Auction up Riverton, Wyoming? 109 head, 617 pound steers, bring 169.75. But then you knew the, the top quotes were going to come out of Kimball Livestock Exchange. I got a couple. I'm going to pick out one. Uh, the first one to give you is 234 head, 913 pound steers at 135 bucks. Wow. But one that's a little more, uh, you know, uh, braggy uh, because it's in the eight weight category. But the top quote that I saw anywhere on Tuesday with a lot of impressive quotes and your Zach Tran top quote for the day, Kimball Livestock Exchange, 124 head, 854 pound steers bring 141.60 and that's your feeder flash for Wednesday.